So now we come to the law of cosines. And I would only use the law of cosines if I couldn't use the law of sines, because the law of sines is pretty easy. The law of cosines simply states that if I have a triangle with sides A, B, C, and opposite angles A, B, and C, then I can do this equation. And you'll see that these three all follow the same patterns. It's the side squared equals the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times the product of those two sides times the cosine of the angle opposite the side that I'm squaring. Okay. You just need to memorize this formula. There's no easy way about it. All right, let's go ahead and use this formula. So I don't necessarily need to draw this triangle because I can just go ahead and plug it into my formula. And it tells me to solve triangle ABC, so I need to find all the missing pieces. Well, with these two sides and this angle, the first thing I'm going to find is I'm going to find side C. And so I know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of the angle. And I can just go ahead and plug this entire thing into my calculator. So let's go ahead and do that now. If I want to get my final answer, what C is, then I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. So this whole thing is what I'm going to plug into my calculator. So I am going to take the square root of, so I'm going to push second x squared to get me square root, and then it'll be 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 times cosine 60. I'm going to go ahead and close my parentheses to end the 60, maybe. And then I'm going to close my parentheses one more time to end the square root. If you don't do that, it's not going to uh, let you have an answer probably, although some calculators will let you get away with that. So go ahead and check back over it, make sure you typed it all in correctly, and then you hit enter, and you find out that C is 13.7. If you don't feel comfortable typing this whole thing into the calculator, you can go ahead and you can solve each individual piece and then type it in, that's fine. But when the thing that I'm looking for is the side, it is totally okay to type the entire thing into the calculator. So 13.7. Okay, now I still need to solve triangle ABC, which means I need to know the measure of angle A, and I need to know the measure of angle B. But now that I have an angle and I have the side opposite it, I can go ahead and I can use the law of sines, which is easier. So I'm going to begin by finding the measure of angle B because it's going to be my biggest angle. And I always want to begin with the biggest angle. So I'm going to say that the sine of 60 over 13.7 is equal to the sine of B over 15. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve this. So B, because I'm looking for the angle, is going to be the inverse sine of 15 sine 60 divided by 13.7. And I'm going to go ahead and type this all into my calculator. So second sine to get the inverse, 15 times sine 60, close the parentheses to end the 60, divided by 13.7 close the parentheses to end the inverse sign and hit enter. And I find out that it is um, 71.5 degrees because that's what tells me around to the nearest tenth. So the measure of angle B is 71.5 degrees. Now I know two of the angles so I can just add them together and subtract them from 180, which tells me that the measure of angle A is 48.5 degrees. And that's how I've solved my triangle. Let's look at example two. So again, I know two sides and I know the angle. 
So I would like you to go ahead and to solve this triangle. You are going to begin by finding side B. B squared is equal to my two sides squared, so 34 squared plus 27 squared minus 2 times 34 times 27 times the cosine of 60. Go ahead and solve this for B. Tell me what B equals. And then find for me the measure of angle A and the measure of angle C. Do that. Come back and check your answers. Hit pause now. All right, you should have found that B was 31.1 and then gone on to find that the measure of angle A was 71.2 degrees and the measure of angle C is 48.8 degrees. If you do not understand how I got those, please be sure to ask about them in class. In the notes check, I am going to ask you to tell me what the measure of side C is and also the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B. Side C, I want to the nearest tenth. The two angle measures, I want to the nearest degree, right? nearest whole degree. Okay, let's talk about problem number four because this is where it gets a little tricky and this is the state in which most students mess up. When you know all three sides and you don't know any of the angles, then you can pick to solve for any angle that you want. And I always like to solve for the biggest angle, which is going to be angle C because it's opposite the biggest side. So I'm going to take my side and square it, and it's going to be equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, so 5 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 5 times 9, and then that would be times the cosine of angle C. All right, so this is 100, and that equals 25 plus 81 minus 2 times 5 is 10, so minus 90 cosine C. Here's where students run into trouble. Okay, they add these two together, and they get 106, and then they get minus 90 cosine C. And you're super, super, super tempted to subtract these two. But this is multiply times cosine C, so it's almost as if this were 106 minus 90 x. These two are not like terms. You cannot combine them. So what you have to do is you have to subtract 106 from both sides. And you get negative 6 over here equals negative 90 cosine c. Then you divide both sides by the thing in front of the cosine. And what you're going to do, these two cancel each other out, so I'm looking for the angle measure, which means I'm going to use the inverse. So I am going to find the inverse cosine, a negative divided by negative is a positive, so I get 6 over 90, and that's going to be equal to the measure of angle C. This is the single greatest mistake that students make. They want to do the subtraction. Okay? That's not going to work. You're not going to get the right answer. You may even get just an absolutely bizarre answer, or it may not even allow you to have an answer at all. You might get an error. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in our calculator. So I'm going to do second cosine, and then 6 divided by 90, and hit enter. And I find out that C measures 86 degrees, 86.2 degrees technically. So measure of angle C equals 86.2 degrees. Now, theoretically, I should go on and I should find the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B also. And I can do that now, and I can use the law of sines to do it. Um, but these notes are getting really long, so I'm going to not do that right here. Um, just be very, very careful when what you know is all three sides and you are looking for an angle. All right, final question in these very long notes. I am going to ask you in the notes check whether you would use the law of sines or the law of cosines to solve this problem. And then I might ask you for either an angle measure or a side measure, depending on how I'm feeling. Okay? So please go on and do the notes check, and be sure if you still have any questions to ask them in class tomorrow.